Uh, Shadow Paymaster General Jonathan Ashworth this morning. We go to him live right now. Were you watching last night, Jonathan? Uh, so, last night? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, um, but, but I think it, uh, what it tells you is you keep playing until the final whistle is blown. And that's what we are focusing on in this campaign. And here's another football uh, line that you will like, Eamon. This is now the squeaky bum time of the campaign. As, uh, I'm not a Man United fan like you, but this is the squeaky bum time. And if GB News viewers, if they want change, if they've had enough of waiting longer for NHS treatment, if they've had enough of all the scandals from the partying in Downing Street to now the gambling scandal, and if they've had enough of being clobbered uh, with the higher mortgages, you've got to come out and vote Labour on Thursday. Don't wake up to five more years of Rishi Sunak on Friday. Do you have um, these pillows that I hear that are being, being given out, a Keir Starmer pillow? Have you got one of these or do you, do you know about this? Uh, I've seen them. I, oh, I mean, they're not, they're not very... <laughs> I actually made me jump when I saw it. We can send you one if you want, um, uh, Eamon. But look, the, 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 the serious message we're getting across is there are lots of people who are still deciding. Lots of people still weighing up their options. But honestly, if you want to change this country, you've got to come out and vote Labour. Voting for any of the other parties helps Rishi Sunak get re-elected. So if you don't want to switch on GB News on Friday morning and hear that Rishi Sunak has been re-elected, if you don't want to wake up to that, vote Labour on Thursday. Um, I want to talk about France and, and tie it into what's happening on Thursday as well. We've seen Marine Le Pen decisively, um, you know, sending a message to Macron in the first round there. Um, and the front of the Guardian this morning says that Labour can stem the populist threat that we're seeing across Europe as well. He says by improving lives. But then we also have 60 um, economists who've signed a joint letter saying that there's going to be stagnation under whether it's the Conservatives or Labour come Friday morning. So how are you going to improve lives, given that you've given yourself such fiscal rules, tight fiscal rules dealing with national debt, you've insisted there'll be no taxation on workers, how are you going to improve lives? Well, first of all, those fiscal rules are very important because we saw what happened with Liz Truss and the Conservatives when they shot the public finances to pieces and it means your viewers are paying more on their mortgage as a consequence. We've got a detailed plan, though, to grow our economy. We've had terrible growth under the Tories these last 14 years. If you grow the economy, you create good, well-paid jobs for people, you raise living standards, that's not only good for the country as a whole, it also means the public finances are in a better position. So we think we can turn the corner on this. We don't have to carry on with the 14 years of failure and chaos we've had. Nothing will change if Rishi Sunak gets back in on Thursday night, uh, Friday morning. But if you want to grow the economy, create good, well-paid jobs, raise living standards, vote Labour on Thursday. You can't tell me, um, you know, you say this is squeaky bum time. You can't tell me your bum's squeaky this week. 20-point lead. <laughs> but people are still making up their minds. People are still weighing it up. And, I, look, this isn't a done deal. You know, the Tories could still do something here. So you've got to come out. If you want to stop the Tories, if you've had enough of the gambling scandals, where it's one rule for the Tories, another for the rest of us, if you had enough of waiting longer and longer on an, NH waiting list, on an NHS waiting list for treatment, you've got to come out and vote Labour. If you've had enough of seeing your family finances squeezed and clobbered year after year, you've got to come out and vote Labour. Do not wake up to Rishi Sunak on Friday. You know, if you don't want that, how will you feel in your stomach if you switch on GB News and you're saying Rishi Sunak's re-elected? How will you feel? If you don't want that feeling, vote Labour on Thursday. And, and if you've had enough of the green belt, vote Labour, because I suppose if you were to come up with a mantra for Starmer, we had education, education, education with Blair. It's build, build, build with Starmer, isn't it? doesn't matter where. Well, we are going to build houses. I mean, you know, there's people All on their 30s the who still can't get on the housing ladder. If we carry on like this, there will be people in their 40s, even 50s, who can't get on the housing ladder. Look, there's lots of brown, brownfield sites across the country. Everybody will have seen it in their local communities. It's usually an area which is overgrown, surrounded by fencing. We should be building on those sites. But there are areas of the country which we've called the grey belt, like old petrol stations, which are now designated green belt, and you can't build on them. That's, that's bananas. We should be building homes on brownfield sites first and these grey belt areas so young people can get 
on the housing ladder. Young people are trapped out of the dream of home ownership in this country. We want people to own property and to get on the housing ladder. So we will be building homes for people, absolutely. She Sunak's comments yesterday that Vladimir Putin will be hoping for a Labour win. Oh, isn't it desperate? Isn't it desperate from Rishi Sunak? Well, can but Labour be trusted under to keep him, us safe? The, uh, yes, the defence of this country will always come first. Absolutely, that is our priority. Under Rishi Sunak, the army has been hollowed out, I think, to the smallest it's been to the times of Napoleon. We're not going to take any lessons from Rishi Sunak on defending this country. Well, you haven't committed to 2.5% of GDP, which the Conservatives have, to be spent on our forces. Well, first of all, you can't believe that promise from Rishi Sunak because it's based on sacking a few civil servants in Whitehall. That's not, that's not a serious plan mm. for defence. That's more like a wing and a prayer. We've said we'll put ourselves on the path towards 2.5%. But look, let me reassure you. Yeah, a Labour government created NATO back in the day, or was part of creating NATO back in the day. We are always going to put defence of the United Kingdom mm. and the people who live here as our number one priority. Mm. And there's lots of talk at the moment about a super majority and lots of predictions that Sir Keir Starmer, who is not the most dynamic of leaders, will struggle to keep the party together. And we're beginning to see some of those cracks already, particularly around the issue uh, of the, the benefit cap o on children. Uh, Gordon Brown also saying he wants to see more action on child poverty. Has the party chosen wealthy pensioners over children? Look, first of all, there's lots of pensioners who are not wealthy. There are, lots of pen there are more pensioners now in poverty. More pensioners have gone into poverty under the Conservatives. And of course, there's m more pensioners whose quality of life is materially impacted because they're waiting so long for a hip replacement or an e-replacement. And some of them are faced with the impossible choice of having to pay for a hip replacement. So we'll always stand up for Britain's pensioners. But we'll also have a big strategy to tackle child poverty. For example, we're going to deliver free breakfast clubs in every primary school so children start school not hungry, but with a breakfast in their belly. So that is some of the decisions that we will take, tackling child poverty, yes, and standing up for our pension as well. It's not an either or, you can do both. I think that phrase should be banned, wealthy pensioners. If they're wealthy pensioners, I've yet to meet them. Um, but it, it absolutely really, really offends me uh, when I hear that. Um, Jonathan Ashworth, thank you. Good, uh, good to hear from you, and good luck with that squeaky bum of yours. <laughs> you get that scene too. Thank you very much indeed.